Hi, and welcome to another episode of Life Ace Shuffle. This is Gloria, your life coach and meditation coach. Hi, welcome to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, your mindfulness coach and life coach. And today we have an amazing guest. Um, his name is Mike Allen. But let me first talk about Mike Allen. He's a gracious, caring, loving person. And uh, he's awesome in so many ways. When I first met him, I wanted to shake his hand. And he says, buddy, no shake your hand. Give me a hug. He gave me a hug and it felt so warm, so genuine to touch another person and just to feel the fact that they are human being, hear their heartbeat and everything. So it was amazing meeting for the first time and I was excited. So Mike Allen, you know, welcome to the Lights of Shuffle podcast and kind of tell us about yourself. Who is Mike Allen? Well, um, thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Ron. Um, who is Mike Allen? Um, I am a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody <laughs> that can help anybody. <laughs> and I love that. Me, but um, <laughs> I, I am, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thankful, you know, um, for who I am and who I've been created to be. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the most important thing for me is, is a part of who I am is, is I, I love people. You know, uh, I love people. I love the youth. Uh, I love the communities that I have been blessed to be a part of. So uh, part of me is, is a part of everyone. And uh, to be able to uh, do what I do, it really, uh, it really shows um, why I'm, I'm, I'm who I am uh, today. So. So you said you're somebody trying to make something happen. Say it one more time. I know. Nobody. <laughs> trying to tell everybody about someone who can save anybody. I love that. Okay. <laughs> so to the universe and to the world, Mike, especially to my, to me, you're somebody and you're somebody special and you're somebody that's been through a lot of difficulties here recently, but you are somebody that's important. So tell us where you're from, where you grew up, where you went to college. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we uh, grew up with my mom and my two sisters. So single mom trying to raise three kids, um, always living in uh, the worst part of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the neighborhoods. And um, my mom, you know, did her best to to make sure that I did not uh, end up in gangs. Uh, so she did whatever uh, she could to make sure that we we that it doesn't happen to me. And uh, from Cincinnati, uh, Ohio, growing up, we moved to Denver, uh, Colorado, and then we ended up uh, moving to Tacoma, Washington. So the Seattle, <clears throat> excuse me, area. So uh, yeah, ended up with uh, spending my high school there uh, and ended up coming down to San Jose to go to college and story goes from there. And what happened after college? What, what, did you have a career after that? Or what happened then? Uh, yes. Um, after college, uh, I went and played professional basketball for uh, four and a half years uh, overseas. And then I played three and a half years here in the States. Um, yeah. Cool. Did it sound, so did you go pro or what happened? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I played professionally um, in the Philippines, Hong Kong, China. Uh, Guatemala, wow. <laughs> uh, you went, Poland, you all over and, the world. <laughs> yeah, Poland and Sweden, uh, and then I played three years here in the states uh, in North Carolina and Orlando um, before coming back to San Jose because I didn't want to be on the East Coast and Midwest uh, around the cold. So it's more prettier and more beaches in California. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the cold, but I don't think I want to deal with snow every every day. But I love the changes no. in the season, but no snow. I'll visit, but I don't think I want to deal with snow. Definitely not. <laughs> so this is where it all started for you? This is where it all started, you know, for me. Um, my, my life uh, was changed. And uh, growing up as a, a high school, um, quote unquote, to everybody else, superstar athlete, um, I played football and baseball all my life. Um, that's my family sporting background uh, with uncles and cousins playing professionally and so forth. Um, it was in my blood. And uh, my 
senior year of high school, um, as I have been recruited all throughout the country, um, scouts that were recruiting me noticed a pattern in my life. And uh, that pattern was in between football and baseball season is when I got in the most trouble. Um, I got kicked out of school, um, you know, just doing stupid things. And um, because I was this um, talented athlete to everyone, um, I was always reinstated back when it's time for the season to start. Uh, so um, scouts so are recruiting and said, hey, listen, you know, you need to uh, find, uh, find a job uh, or you need to play a winter sport um, because you are about to lose out, you know, on $150,000 worth of free schooling and a potential professional career uh, if you continue it in, in this, this pace. Um, this is your senior year. You need to make some changes. So um, I uh, wanted to make my mom proud. Um, and I said, hey, you know, let me go try the job thing. Um, the job thing wasn't working because I had everything <laughs> handed, had everything handed to me. And, and that's what my mom knew, you know, because of these sports that I was naturally gifted in, you know, um, these coaches were basically feeding our family. You know, they were giving us cars, they were giving us money, they were giving us whatever. Wow. Um, as long as I, you know, basically was coming close to making a decision to come to their, their college. Um, so the work thing was not working for me. Um, so the next opportunity was, you know, I need to play a winter sport. So the first sport that I went to was wrestling um, because I thought it was the WWE and WWF and uh, walked into the, the wrestling room and I saw the outfits that they were wearing. I said, nope, that's not for me. And I wasn't down to roll on the ground with, with anyone. <laughs> so, um, so my last option was, was basketball. And uh, I played basketball um, uh, for fun, played in PE, played to the parks with my friends, but never played organized basketball. Uh, so here it is, basketball, let me try out. I don't think that I'm going to make the team, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. If not, I'll go back to trying to get to work and get a, get a job because, again, I want to make my mom proud. I really did. And that, that was uh, important, you know, for me, uh, and for her. Uh, so, um, tried out for the team. Didn't think I was going to make it, uh, went through the first and second cut. Um, I knew that I was going to get cut, you know what I mean? Uh, cause I'm looking at all the, the players there, um, very talented, you know, very talented athletes, um, in that sport, you know, but again, I was baseball and football. So, uh, third cut comes and uh, the coach calls me into his office. I had just seen two players uh, leave his office. One was happy. The other one was sad. Um, and here I am. And I'm, you know, preparing myself. Oh, you know, I didn't make the team. Oh, well, go get the job. Um, and he told me that I I made the team. <laughs> and I looked at him like, uh, are you serious? Um, and I, the first thing I said was, what about that person that just left? And he tells me, you made the team. And again, I asked him, what about the other person that just left? And he looked me in my eyes and he said, son, listen, I'm putting you on this team. You know, and the only reason why I'm putting you on this team is because we need to keep you out of trouble. Um, and we need to have you, you know, we already talked to the football coach and I talked to the baseball coach. We need to do something to keep you out of trouble. Otherwise, you know, you can end up dead in jail or get kicked out of school, you know, again, and never have an opportunity to come back. Um, so I'm like, okay, you know, he's like, do you accept? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> I, I don't want to get a job. Hey, be on the basketball team. <laughs> and uh, he pulls me, takes me out of his office. He pointed to the scoreboard. He said, um, when we're up by 20 points or when we're down by 20 points is the only time you're going to play, which meant you're never seeing the floor. And um, as a, you know, star football player and baseball player, having everything going for me, scholarship offers and so forth, um, I wasn't down with sitting on the bench for no one. And I took it to heart with what he said. And um, I knew that I had a task in front of me, even at a young age. You know, I want to play. I want to be 
in the heat of the action and, and showcasing what I have, right? Um, and uh, I knew what my gift was and, and what was going to keep me on the floor was my speed and my strength. Um, uh, so here it is um, throughout the, the whole time, um, the season, you know, it's only about four, four and a half months, you know, for high school, you know, basketball season. Um, I wasn't playing a lot. I was sitting on the bench, but I was, you know, taking that time uh, off the court, you know, I mean, off of games where I was just working on my game, uh, trying to get better, working on skills to, you know, try to get in the game. And uh, in February, uh, which is the last month of a high school basketball season, um, my name was called. And the only reason why I was called was because uh, we had teammates that got injured and we also had some teammates that didn't make grades. Um, I wasn't a great um, uh, academic student, but, you know, I knew what it took to uh, be able to play, <laughs> you know, sports. And i uh, make the long story short, um, started getting playing time. And, and once I got on that floor, nobody was taking that back from no one. And I was that determined. And I worked and worked and worked. Um, and I started to do very well. And uh, what ended up happening is... Uh, we end up uh, winning our league championship uh, the first time in 30 years, and we went to the state playoffs the first time in 60 years. So it was a huge thing for our school um, in Tacoma Stadium High School uh, is the high school, and it's a huge castle. So if you go on Google and you look at Stadium High School, everyone falls in love with this this campus because you know it's 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 a castle and it's where the majority of, you know, uh, well-known movies uh, have been made. You know, a lot of the Air Bud music movies, um, uh, Hand the Rocks the Cradle, 10 Things I Hate About You, and, you know, several, uh, uh, you, wow. see, you see you see that, that campus and so forth. So that's where, you know, my basketball career started. I did well, um, and I started getting looks from uh, college coaches for uh, basketball. <clears throat> Look at that. All right, next, uh, MJ, then. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not at all. It's possible for a second. <laughs> so so yeah, when the coach I, said I, down. I, what I always say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Doesn't say when the coach no, said so down by 20, up say, by 20. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love uh, podcast interviews right oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yes the most definitely <laughs> <laughs> who's going first <laughs> go first go ahead, mike go ahead <laughs> well i mean i was gonna say you know, I mean that that you know even even though uh you know i was was this person who was you know like you said you know this you know up by 20 or down by 20 20 guy I knew, you know, for me, you know, that I was not going to settle. And, and that's the mm. way that I live my life. Um, that's the way that I, I, I enc en encourage and challenge my own children as well as many others. So, um, you know, there's always an opportunity out there. Um, you can take what people tell you, um, but and you can believe it, you know, or you can take what they say and you can apply apply whatever it is that you want to accomplish um, uh, to get to where you want to be. So uh, that's why I'm so driven. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> so I, that happened a long time ago. You never forgot that, right? So down by 20, up by 20. How did that really just change your life, that idea? You know, I mean, it, it changed my life because that's the way that I, I the way that I coach um, and the way that I mentor uh, student athletes um, is using that, that using that those words, um, but in a different light. I don't want you to be a 2020 player. I don't want you to just be good. I want you to be great. And in order for, for you to be great, you have to believe in what we are, the blueprint that we're giving you to help you to be successful. And if you really do want it, you know, I mean, you can accomplish whatever you set your heart out to do and we will get you there. 
Uh, we'll get you there by by motivating you. We will get you there by inspiring you. We'll get you there by by really um, hitting you hard uh, mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, and that's what we go through with life. Uh, we go yeah. through mental, <laughs> physical, uh, emotional um, challenges. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you are you are who you are um, by the choices and the decisions that you make. So true. You have a choice. You always have a choice. So after you graduate college, what came next? Um, after I graduated college, um, I got my first opportunity um, to go play professionally. Um, and I actually, you know, declined uh, the first offer that I received uh, to play professional basketball overseas. Um, and I went into uh, a um, organization called Young Life. And uh, Young Life is is a uh, Christian, you know, mean organization, you know, that reaches out, you know, to um, high school, high school to college uh, age students, uh, trying to help them, you know, to find their place uh, and their purpose uh, in in life. So I chose um, to go into as a uh, uh, area director um, through Young Life. Um, to change lives. And uh, it's just like a, a club, you know what I mean? You know, a youth group, you know, that you you attend, uh, but it's, it's all geared towards, you know, high school and college students. And uh, I knew that that's what I needed to do first. Um, and, uh, you know, the first uh, club that we had, you know, um, group that we had, I had 200, there was 250 students that came out uh, to it. Um, and, uh, through, you know, motivation, through speaking, um, a little bit of comedy, you know, fun and games, activities, uh, you know, that's just, um, that's what I, I, I was doing. Um, and then uh, I did that for about a year. Uh, and then I, I went uh, in, into my first uh, professional contract. So, um, in which I played in uh, the Philippines, Hong Kong, and China. So. And um, Mike, how long did you um, play professional outside of the country for? Uh, four and a half years. So oh, four and a half years. Four and a half years uh, of your overseas. Life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in another country, didn't know the language. Um, I had everything imaginable to man happen uh, overseas. You know, I got jumped twice and you know, got robbed three times and, um, you know, had to fend myself, you know, what I mean, in, in different, uh, different situations. Uh, it was scary. Um, it was hard being away from, you know, family. Um, but because of the fact that we moved around so much, I love moving and I love going to uh, a new place because um, it was like always, here's a new start. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But, uh, but I loved it. And, um, I love culture. Um, you know, I love people. Um, I, I always took uh, the, uh, the, the advantage of whenever I went overseas, when an American player uh, goes overseas to play a sport, the first thing that the locals think is that you're coming to take our money and <laughs> you're coming to take our women. It, it's, it's hands down, you know, um, uh, it's the first thing that that people uh, people say, you know, um, and I was, you know, I've had great mentors and great leaders uh, that um, have been surrounded around my life um, that prepared me, um, you know, for for that. And I was always the one that that wanted to be different, um, I wanted to be different. Uh, I wanted to be the one going into the schools and speaking, you know, I wanted to be the one going to the the. Uh, the boys clubs and, and community centers and, and just, you know what I mean? Building relationships and, and making people smile um, and seeing people have fun and, and so forth. Uh, so um, it's just a part of my passion and just what I love to do. After being away for four years, you came back to the States. What follow suit after that? Were you just getting another job and, and doing something different or what happened there? 
Yeah. So what ended up happening for me is um, after that four and a half years, I came back and uh, uh, I had a great agent um, uh, who really um, helped me to, to understand what are you going to do after, you know, what are you going to do when you, if you get injured and you're not, you're never able to play again? Um, what, it, what are you going to do if a team cuts you um, and you have to you sit out for a little bit? You know, you need to start preparing yourself for that. Not saying that that's going to happen. Um, and I'm a very positive person. Um, I, I believe um, I can make a rock fly. <laughs> so uh, I really believe I, I can do that. Although law of gravity and this and that, a rock is not going to fly. It'll fly for a little bit when you throw it. <laughs> um, but it's always coming down, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, but that's just just a type of faith, you know what I mean, um, that I have, and um, you know, I just knew uh, that I a part of what I wanted to do, you know, was um, give back to the community. So uh, I um, ended up um, walking into a a Catholic school uh, during the summer, and I asked them if I could run a camp. Uh, for them. And they're like, oh, we were looking for someone to run some camps for us. You know, are you really interested? I'm like, yes, I am. And, you know, gave them a little bit of my background and and they jumped on it. And uh, that was my very first basketball camp in Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale, California, uh, at Resurrection Catholic School. And, uh, you know, that ended up turning into from going from a, a camp uh, to uh, me taking a position uh, because the, the the athletic director and the PE teacher at the time was going on maternity leave, um, so instantly I, I went from running my running the camp to being an athletic director and teacher, uh, you know, PE teacher with with no credential. And with the Catholic schools, you didn't need a you didn't need a credential. You just need needed passion, uh, organizational skills. Um, a love for the kids, um, a love for the school, a love for the community. And that's, you know, everything of, of who, who I am. Uh, so I did that for about three, three years. And then I went back, uh, back to playing. So. Wow. That's that, <laughs> that's, I think to me, like I, I'm speechless because just, being away for four and a half years, coming back, doing that, and then going back to play, it, that's that's a journey. And it goes to show your passion for um, for the sport. And it's funny how interesting it is that you didn't even start playing basketball. It's football and baseball mm-hmm. and how this came up. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, you know, I always say, I mean, I, I, I feel – um, that there was two sports that I was naturally gifted in and potentially I was going to make a lot of money. I was very good. Um, I could step on, on a football field and because of my speed, you know, I ran the 40 in four, three, right. You know, so one of the fastest guys in running and I was a quarterback and I was a safety, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, and then with baseball, I was, an African American catcher, in which you don't see very many uh, African American catchers out there. So, yeah. um, you know, and so I play positions uh, that really um, uh, shows a lot of leadership. Their their leadership positions, um, their their captain, you know, positions, uh, and their those positions are are who uh, gets looked up to the most. Um, uh, so like I said, I felt that, that two, two, two naturally talented, uh, gifts that I had in those two sports and family background of playing professionally and this and that, um, it was, it was molded into one sport and in being basketball. Um, and it was really, I only played because of a coach that changed my life. Wow. <clears throat> and you started playing basketball again. And did you go back to coaching youth? How long did that tenure shift um, when we moved back to basketball last before you moved yeah. something out? 
so when I um, when I uh, went back to play, um, the seasons um, were always over the overseas seasons and and the the state um, uh, professional farm teams. I will say um, they're they they always end in June uh, or they end in April. So a uh, typical uh, season overseas uh, starts in in August, ends in uh, March or April. Um, just like a college uh, season. Um, and the professional teams here in the States, uh, outside of the NBA and the G League, they start in January um, and they end in, you know, uh, May, April, May or June, depending on how good your team is. So uh, every time I would come back home, um, it was, you know, I'm, I started my sports academy. So that one little camp that I did at at Resurrection Catholic School, it ended up expanding uh, to several community centers in the Bay Area. Um, so, um, you know, it started out, you know, me at um, Sunnyvale Community Center in Sunnyvale. It then moved to and opened up in Redwood, Redwood City at Red Morton Community Center. It went to Saratoga at the Saratoga Community Center. It went to Campbell to the Campbell Community Center. Uh, and then it went to San Jose. So I had grew, you know what I mean, pretty much every year uh, by having contracts uh, with uh, the, the community centers. Um, and I saw then, you know what I mean, that uh, this, is what, this is what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. Um, and, you know, one of the things that my agent said to me is you have to find that 100 and I never really knew what that meant. Um, and the way that he explained to me is, is that one, that thing that you're 100 is that thing that you're going to put 100% effort, 100% time, 100% energy, and 100% whether you're getting paid for it or not, you're still going to do that. And that is what makes you happy. And I found that. You know, I, I really did find that. So that's why I do what I do. What's, had, what's the... Um, Go ahead. ahead. I just want to say you've had really, really great mentors um, around you all through this year or two have kind of guided you because I've noticed and I've realized that, you know, with, with hearing this story of yours, um, it stuck with you just from day one of what they had given and, and advice that they were had given to you. Um, you've kind of brought that all through your life. Yeah. And I'm about to get like super emotional right now. So sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. Um, okay. you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, the, the coaches that, that I've had, you know, especially my college coach, um, he took a chance, you know, in me and his thing for me was like, I, he could care less that I was I was going to play basketball for him. Could care less, you know. Only thing he cared about is what he he said, and he still says it today. And he's eighty nine years old. I knew that you were going to be a leader. I knew that you were going to change the world. And um, through my life and challenges and everything else, um, <laughs> you know, no matter what, I, I that's what I want to do. And I took it to heart, you know, and he gave me an opportunity and he loved me, you know, for who I was. Um, I, I lived with him and his family the first uh, quarter of school because I, my uh, Pell Grant money and solid scholarship money wasn't uh, available, you know, yet, you know, so I lived in his home. And that wow. was the first time that I actually saw a father who yeah. loved his kids and who loved his family. Yeah. He saw something in you. A lot. Yeah. Something special yeah. about you. So, mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I really love that, Mike, because what he saw in you, you didn't see yet. Mm -hmm. But he instilled in you some attributes and some characteristics that allow you to bring it to life, right? Just like a rose needs sun, it needs proper soil, it needs water to actually flourish. He gave what you need to flourish. And um, now you're giving that back to other youth. And when I heard that 100, I just I had to resonate with that on a different level. 
So I think I told you I was a personal trainer in Santa Clara, and I did that for a number of years after quitting my full-time career. And you know what? So part of being a NASMA trainer is that you every two years you have to make sure you're completing your continuing educational credits. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I always thought it was a gimmick, right? I just didn't like it at all. So I always find this weekend warrior, which is like I go on a weekend for either two days or one day for like eight hours and I get like you know 1.5 or 0.8 credit, right? So I didn't have to do it. So I can pay my credit as soon as possible. And when you, you see, when I hear that 1 100, it really is funny because now I'm aligning better with my life. Because mm. we're doing these podcasts, Gloria and I, and obviously, you know, this is something out of our time that we're doing. We really, really enjoy it. So we're doing something we enjoy and not getting paid for it. So it's it's pretty much a 100. And when I think about coaching clients and, you know, I started next week um, online to get my master's in psychology. Uh, it's like, wow, these are just free flowing. So I'm more in alignment with what I want to do because there's no resistance. You know, when I was doing doing training, doing CEUs, I just thought it was a gimmick. It's just all I want to do is make money. You got to do your, your CPR test every two years. I hate, I just didn't like doing that. <laughs> you know, I felt all this resistance at so many different angles, but now everything just flows. And the term is really called hilotropic. You know, you go where energy flows. And when I heard that, it's like, it's easy to digest that. I tell people hilotropic, they're like, well, what does that mean? But if you say 1-100, what thing can, one thing you can do that you put 100% effort regardless of what it is. So yeah. thank you, Mike, because I'm going to use it now. I'm taking it from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take, it from some, I take it from someone else. And it's so funny um, that you, you're sharing that story right now um, because I'm three weeks away from uh, completing my uh, NASM uh, and uh, nutrition and, and sports performance. So um, I, you know, saw it as, a, as another opportunity to add to what I already do. Now I'm a coach for life, yeah. right? You know, I'm going to be coaching to the day that I die. Uh, I'm going to be coaching. I'm going to be speaking. Uh, I'm going to be changing lives for the rest of my life. I'm going to die doing this. Okay. Um, but I knew that, um, that I wanted, I wanted to have something more uh, to bring to the table outside of who I am, outside of this success that I, I've had, you know, outside of some of the failures that I've had and so forth, um, you keep adding to uh, who you are and what you do that makes an impact and makes a difference. So it gives me and it's going to give me another opportunity uh, to build more relationships to an even bigger uh, audience. Um, So, yeah. (laughs) You're going where the energy flows. You're following the energy is pretty much right. That's exactly what yeah. you're doing. Hilotrophic yes. effect. Mm-hmm. And it's all in alignment mm-hmm. of exactly what you want to do and that you like to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you dream of doing this right now in your life? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, not not even <laughs> close. Uh, I mean, I, I literally, I, I, I knew from three years old that I was going to be a professional football player and a professional baseball player. I knew it. It's the only thing that I've saw. I've I've seen, you know, my uncles and, you know, uh, my, my grandfather, that's what they did. And, and so it was in me, you know, uh, the, the 6 AM, you know, workouts, you know, the, the late at night, you know, tossing the ball, you know, on the, the stairs and trying to catch it, you know, um, it was in me and I knew that that was going to be, I was going to be doing it. I never believed that I was ever going to be playing basketball. And I can go back to that day that, that I said I was coming down to San Jose Christian college to play basketball. My family thought I was absolutely nuts. My mom was like, no, you're not going to that school. You know, um, you know, you, you signed this letter, you know what I mean, of intent to go play at the University of Washington. You're going to be playing football. You know, you're going to be playing baseball and so forth. And, you know, on, on a simple recruiting trip um, and what I look at recruiting today, you know, as a college coach, you know, I mean, even as a high school coach and as a camp clinician, whatever, um, people are going to go, excuse me, to where the energy is people are going to yeah. go to yeah. where where someone who cares 
um, and and loves what they do, and 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 they're 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 not just going to be there to blow a whistle. Um, mm-hmm. And there's more substance to it. Um, and you know, there's tons of trainers out there, tons, tons of basketball trainers, football, baseball, uh, you know, strength trainers, and so forth. Um, but those ones that are, are successful, um, they're the ones who who care. They're the ones who who meet people where they are, and and they love on them. They love on them, and they help them um, uh, in every way that they can. And and that's what I pride myself on, and why I do what I do. So. Yeah. Yes. It's it's like you'd have to love them just like how you love your kids. Hmm. Right. You you treat them like they're your kids. Because if you have that love for the sport and, and, you know, Mike, you're making so much, you're making such a big difference here and and especially in the youth. Um, And as you can see with your former players who are here to, here to support you as well. I mean, they probably started with you as, young as four or five years old and they're all grown. They're all grown men <laughs> and women, right? But um, there is a piece of you or something that they've learned from and they t- took from you that they will never forget. And that t- they take with them for life. You know, not only have you taught them basketball skills, you've also taught them something that they will take for life. And, and I think that's, you know, what you're doing is really wonderful. And I honestly think it's, it's a great thing. Um, so a question on this, because I know this and I'd like to, the audience to know this. So from going to different community centers, building that clinic that you've had, is this, after all that, was that where Mike Allen Sports was born? Yeah. So, um, you know, going from community center to community center. I mean, literally my, my daily regimen, um, was seven o'clock in the morning. I'm going to Sunnyvale community center, 11 o'clock. I'm going to Red Moore and, and Redwood city, you know, one I'm going to Saratoga, you know, five o'clock I'm ending up in, in Campbell, you know, um, and that's what I was doing. And I loved it. You know, um, didn't like the tra- the travel and the traffic, you know, um, Bay Area traffic, didn't like that. But for me, it was like, I'm going to a new place because, I, again, I love going places. I love traveling, love being in, you know, different places and stuff. It was like I was going to a different, a different city, um, different people, different yeah. walks of life. Um and different opportunities to to make an impact and difference. So that whole thing was just like it was like a circle, you know. Started in the middle, and it went outside, and came back around. And the next day, you're right back in the middle, you know, again. And um, that is that's that's what I did. Uh, so uh, going through that that process, it was like okay, you know, uh, eventually. Uh, the goal was to have my own facility, um, have my own facility uh, to where I wasn't bound to go to this place, that place, and that place, because you're only given a certain amount of hours, right? And I, I felt that if I had my own place, I can have, I can go Monday through Sunday. Um, I can go from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the morning if I wanted to do that. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, having my own facility was was a dream that I had. And, you know, like I said, it was fr- it, w- it was some frustrations uh, having to go to place after place, um, knowing that you only had a certain amount of time. And that's how Mike Allen Sports was was birthed. And, and I never wanted it to be Mike Allen, Mike Allen Sports, my name, you know, um, but that's just what my my agent said <laughs> it's your brand it's your brand yeah, yeah. it's who you are and so forth um so uh i just rolled with it <laughs> yeah and how, how long did you run your business for for oh my gosh 26 years now 26 oh years wow yeah mm-hmm. yeah so started it as a a sophomore uh, sophomore in college and it was built up 
year after year after year. So, you know. so I have a question for you. Um, I see a lot of adversity, a lot of triumph. And what's really happened to you the last couple of years? Kind of curious about that. <laughs> Life. <laughs> Life, <laughs> Life happened. happened. Um, it happened with, with everyone, you know. Um, uh, went through a, a really tough family crisis, um, you know. Um, uh, went through that that challenge. Um, so I call that my pre-pandemic, um, you know. Um, went through a pre-pandemic, which was my family being broken up. Um, uh, then, you know, um, the... The real pandemic, um, where uh, we all uh, faced, you know, the hardship of having to shut everything down. And for me, um, and my business and my organization, um, uh, I was hit just like many many people. So I can never say I was the only one. Um, I didn't never felt like I was the only one. Um, but my story. Uh, my story is my story. So uh, I end up um, not only uh, losing, you know, having to shut down my business, um, but I lost my, the training center that I built from the ground up um, with uh, all of the players and the parents who helped me build it. Yeah. Wow. All the, the floor, the, the basketball, installing the basketball hoops, everything. I, I lost it all. Um, so that was my, that was my, the real pandemic. Um, and then I, uh, because of financial struggles, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the financial struggles, uh, I lost the first home um, that I was renting, you know, for our family uh, because I could no longer pay for it. Um, so before I actually lost um, and I had to give up my training center because I could not pay for it, um, I was, that's where I was sleeping. So it was home, you know, for a little bit. Um, and so I had to give it up. And um, yeah, um, but in the midst of all of that, um, you know, I was still coaching. I was coaching college at De Anza College and I was uh, uh, pursuing uh, my master's degree uh, in sports management and leadership. Um, so the pandemic happened. I was still coaching. I was doing my master's, um, you know, uh, then shut down everything, didn't really have a place to go. Uh, but I was the, the basketball season had not been shut down yet. And um, we were uh, just entering uh, becoming uh, the conference champions uh, first time in nine years uh, at De Anza. And um, uh, we're just about to go into the playoffs. And then the shut the big shutdown hit, and that's when all the sports were ceased. So the only thing that I really had then, you know, during the pandemic was get this master's done. Um, and it was not easy. You know, it was very, it was hard. Um, uh, it was very hard. Um, they were uh, at the community college. Um, they were asking uh, coaches to still uh, teach. Um, and learn how to teach online. And I'm like, hey, I'm all down um, because I, I could not let these student athletes go. Yeah, I needed to be there for them. And even though I was going through everything that I was going through, all the challenges, you know, the losses, you know, the heartache, um, I needed to be there for these student athletes. And I had 40 of them uh, in my classes. Um, so, um, it was a basketball related taught class that became a weekly, you know, two, two days a week, uh, counseling session, um, a two days a week, inspirational motivation message, um, to keep them, um, uh, encouraged, keep them, you know, um, dealing with, you know, mental illness, dealing with depression, dealing with wanting to, to give up dealing with, man, am I going to be able to continue my career, you know, uh, playing? So I was teaching them, right, you know, how to get, get through these challenges, but they were also teaching me yeah. how to get to my own challenges. Yeah. And, and that is what really was, I didn't even know 
that I was going through mental health issues. I didn't know that I was going through depression. I didn't know that 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 these physical challenges were about to happen uh, in my own life. And um, but I needed to be there for you know these student student athletes, and uh, I stayed there. So yeah. <clears throat> did you um did you feel somewhat defeated at some point? Uh, did I feel defeated? Yeah. I was defeated. <laughs> I was broken. <laughs> yeah. I was broken. I, I didn't want to get up in the morning. Um, what was I going to get up to? Right. Didn't want to get up. Didn't want to get out of bed. Um, didn't know what was happening. Um, very frustrated. Um, family broken up, you know, losing my business, losing the training center that I, I built, you know, um, and now my whole life and everything that I do is gone. Um, I was defeated. Um, I lost, you know, broken family. I lost a part of who I was. So I lost a part of who I was and what I do and the energy and the passion and everything that I had. I lost that um, during, you know, pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, and I lose all this stuff, right? And it is stuff because we can get it back, right? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I lost all of it. And I did not know what to do. I did not know who to talk to. And I felt that I had to be strong for everybody. Because everybody that comes in contact, oh, he's so encouraging. He's motivational. Man, does anything happen to him in his life? And I'm always going to be, I'm always going to be real. You know, I'm going to tell people how it is. I'm going to be transparent. I'm not going to hold anything back. And I'm going to tell people how it is, you know. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't know how to do it. Didn't know how, how to do it. And even though I continue to be teaching um, this class online, <clears throat> with these student athletes and I'm preparing these motivational quotes and these messages and inspiration, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it was actually teaching me. Yeah. So I was being taught while teaching. And, and if we all have a humble heart and a teachable mind, we can learn from, you know what I mean? A donkey that's walking down the street. And uh, if we're open, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if we're open. So uh, just like I was talking about that, that rock lion, you know, um, that's, that's where I was, you know, that's where I was. And it was hard. It was very difficult. Um, uh, very frustrating nights. I, I would put on this hat, you know, or this mask, you know, throughout the day, be encouraging, do this, do that. And then once those lights are off, I'm crying all night. I'm not even sleeping. Um, but I was still pursuing, I got to finish this master's. This is going to help me in the long run. Oh, the pandemic is going to be over. I'm going to be able to reopen, open my, my, my business, you know, my sports organization, and I'm going to be coaching. I'm going to men be mentoring. And it wasn't happening. It was not happening. And I did not know what to do. Um, so I would say that, that I was a, uh, a depression walker. So dealing with the depression, dealing with uh, mental health issues, not really knowing what was going on. And I'm helping people that were dealing with depression yeah. and mental health issues. And I was going through it myself and I didn't even know what to do. And that's when I started opening up uh, with a counselor, um, sitting down with a counselor. And uh, to this day, you know, I mean, that woman has changed my life and she's telling me, I changed her life <laughs> because I'm, you know, I'm, you know, this, how are you still, you know, how are you not an alcoholic? How are you not yeah. on drugs? How are you not, you know, uh, bitter and angry? You know, you still have this joy. You still have this passion. Um, I'm a warrior, you know, and, and, and I feel that, that a part of, you know, these losses and a part of everything I've been dealing with, I'm here to make an impact and I'm here to make it, make a difference. I'm here to encourage everyone to say, you know, and let them know that if you keep a level head and you stay focused, you can accomplish whatever you set your heart out to do. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, every day, despite what I go through. Yeah. 
Yeah, love that, Mike. Really do. I have a question. Um, so you have po- pre-pandemic, pandemic, the post-pandemic uh, things happened to you. What did that pre-pandemic look like? If you don't mind sharing. Um, the pre-pandemic, um, you know, un- unfortunately, um, life was unfaithful. Um, and I found out and, uh, it destroyed, destroyed me. Um, and even then I held that in for two months without telling a counselor. And, um, we all have choices. We all have decisions that we, we make. Um, you know, I, 12 years of, of marriage, um, didn't see it coming didn't see it coming at all. And I had to check myself. What am I doing? What did I do wrong? You know, um, I had to have done something, you know, for this to, to happen and, and so forth. Um, and as I was checking myself, um, I was also preparing uh, to confront. Um, I was also preparing uh, to still love and forgive. And I was able to do that without counseling because of my heart and my love, you know, um, for, um, the woman that I married and, uh, you know, and, you know, even though I confronted it and, you know, when you confront something that has happened, you know, the first thing we want to do, we want to fight. No, it's not me. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. So forth and all that. Um, and that's what it was. And, uh, I was able to really humble myself and and say, I love you, I forgive you, we're gonna get through this, you know, we need to go to counseling because I don't trust you, you know, um, but we're gonna get through this. And like I said, I'll be transparent, you know, so uh, we're gonna get through this and I forgave. Um, and only for, um, unfortunately, her to still leave. And we have two beautiful children um, that, um, I love and I adore like crazy and, you know, uh, going through those, those challenges as well too. So, yeah. Wow. Look at that. What a kind man you are, even though you, your wife got caught, um, cheating, you're willing to accept it. And as long as you guys work together, right. It takes you now 50% you and 50% another person go to counseling, to work things out. Is it something I missed? Right. Cause when something like that traumatic happens to people, I mean, it's both you and your wife. So it's not just it happened to you, it also happened to her. The person that mm-hmm. happens to, let's say you're the victim, the first thing you go to, what did I do wrong? Now, for both cheating on each other, then obviously it is what it is. But if one person does and one person does not, we're going to look and see, mm-hmm. what did I do wrong? And that's really how you care as a person because you want to do things that are right or do things that do not harm <clears throat> each, each, each individual person. But it's ironic that we always want to blame ourselves for someone to commit something wrong, right? In our book. And it's just, it really just sucks um, that, you know, that pre pandemic happened. And then it's like, I tried to work it out. You didn't meet me halfway. It's like, I still need to forgive you. And more importantly, um, you know, you got to forgive yourself, right? You see on the back wall, it says self love. Because when we go through stressful events like that, it's more important we have a support system, be it we have a therapist, counselor, psychologist, count, you know, whatever it is. But more important, we show ourselves self love mm-hmm. because you can beat your head over with a hammer that it's me, it's me, I did something mm-hmm. wrong when inevitably you did best you could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, forgiveness, yeah. And forgiving yourself is, is kindness and self compassion. So uh, once you have that in you, like just the self compassion alone, it's you'll be in a better place. It's freeing, you know, it's it really is. And, and I've, I'm saying that because I had just gone through that recently and just last week. And in that we can go through another whole story. And that was this whole father daughter relationship that I've been wanting my whole entire life. And at the very end of this was, it was where <clears throat> you won't, you don't have to forgive the other person. You don't have to forget what had happened. You don't have to forget the past, but it's more so like really for yourself and forgiveness, forgiving yourself and just kind of like letting go. You're not let, not necessarily letting go and trying to forget what happened or forget the past, but letting go of the anger and the pain 
And that and just that alone, mm. it's so freeing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, going going through that, you know, it, it's the type type of person I am. You know, it's just I positivity got to stay positive. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, somebody just smacks you in the back of the head, smile. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, that's the type of person. Uh, that's the type of person I am. And um, you know, so it wasn't hard for me to forgive. It wasn't hard for me to love. Um, I've had many people um, treat me wrong or disrespect me or think that I'm this and and that and so forth. Um, and but when you truly know who you are, when you truly know where you're going, when you truly know what you want to do, people can say whatever they want to say. Um, but I'm going to be driven. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep fighting no matter what. And I continue to fight and fight and fight, hope and hope and hope, have faith, have faith, have faith. And, you know, the the positive thing is going to happen. Be back together, families together, we're good. And yeah. it wasn't happening because, again, it's 50 it's 50, 50 in order for mm-hmm. it to be that 100. And, and, and yeah. that it wasn't happening. Um, and I was seeing two, two counselors, you know, seeing two counselors, you know, um, and, you know, literally like, you know, self-help, you know, I'm going to spend as much money as I can uh, just so that I can, I can be okay so that I can make it so that I don't go crazy because I felt that I was going crazy. I felt that I was going to, at one point, just jump off of a bridge. I really felt that I thought was going to happen, and I couldn't. Wow. Even on those days when I was going to, you know, I mean, jump off of off of a bridge and and climb that mountain and just jump. Those days, all I thought about was all of these kids, all of these student athletes, all of these families that I had been given an opportunity to share my message persevere, be a positive example in your community, work hard, have a good attitude, smile. Even though you're going through the the worst things of your life, you will get through it because there's always something better that's going to happen. Um, And I was facing that myself. And uh, at the end of the day, it's like, I'll be darned if I be that person where I've shared this message. I've encouraged all these people, and I could not, I could not, um, I did not want to have the responsibility um, of if I give up, right? And someone hears, and I've been fortunate to touch a lot of people's lives, and it's not about me. I'm thankful, you know, what I mean that I've been chosen to be that person, and but it's not about me. Um, but if I did give up and somebody found out I could not live with them giving up. And that's why I continue to keep on fighting every single day. So oh Mike and, Allen, look at that. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. And, but it, it takes a village, you know, just as parents, it takes a village to raise our children. <clears throat> it yeah. takes a community uh, to help each other. And I really believe in community. I really believe in, in, in you know, being everything that you can be um, uh, for somewhere, someone else. And my biggest issue, I would say, is that I care so much about others that I forget to care about myself. Yeah. So right now, in this process of what I'm going through right now, you know, in my life, I'm learning how to take care of myself. I'm learning that right now. I'm 48 years old, you know, and I'm learning how to take care of myself too. Um, yeah. So. And yeah. You, you have such a good heart, Mike. And, you know, as, as we can all see and, you know, hearing your story, you just, you just keep going and no matter what the situation is, and no matter how you feel, you just keep going. I think also it's that knowing that all this is not permanent. Pain is temporary. And then we always, we're so geared into like, 
somewhat kind of blaming ourselves in a lot of things where we see, what did I do wrong? But really it's, it's, you know, I think you're at a mm. point right now where you really have to now really take care of yourself and, and acceptance. I think it's cut, you're mm. coming there and getting there, the acceptance and then now taking care of yourself. Uh, but know that there's so many people out there mm. around you that supports you and love you. And I think that's also another thing that keeps mm. you strong. Um, it's the love, the love of the community, the mm. love of the people that you have. You may have that one person, you may mm. have one person, but you have so much more or millions of others that loves you, you know? <laughs> mm. And your kids. Yeah. No. Yes, no, most definitely. Yeah. And so, Mike, I got a question know, for you. Oh, go ahead. Uh, there's a song that I, I am eventually going to sing, um, but I'll, I'll do it after. Um, but it's on my heart right now. And I'm not a singer. I'm not a professional singer. But, you know, I can carry a tune. And I, <laughs> I definitely want to share this song before we're done. So yeah. I have to. So I'm listening to what is being spoken to me. So, yeah. We will. So I'll get, before you sing your song, I have a question. It's always, uh, as we get to the end of our podcast, what is one takeaway that's one to three sentences long that you can tell the audience and then you can sing your song? Uh, very simple. Learn to do things right and do them right every time. And if you keep a level head and you stay focused, things will work out. It may not happen when you want it, but it, things will work out. You just got to keep striving and keep pushing towards uh, the goal. Um, and the goal is be who you are. Be who you are. I love that. Be who you are. I love that. Be who you are. Be authentic. <clears throat> right? Awesome. Yeah, and uh, hmm. let's hear the song. <laughs> yeah, Mike, yeah, it's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm not afraid, for I know that he is with me. Whether I fall or if I fail, if I follow and I know he's walking right beside me, he promised not to leave me and if i ever feel alone my hands i'll raise and give him praise for i know he takes care of his own i'm not afraid for I know that Jesus chose me. And before the world began, he's called out our name. And though that men may fret, and even cry and give in. I won't be afraid. Hey, hey, hey. I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For in him my whole life, he's walking right beside you. He promised to never leave you, 
And if you ever feel alone, he will be right here for you. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Really appreciate that. Wow. And you said you can't carry a tune? <laughs> You carried it just fine. <laughs> I know. That was perfect. That was great. Thank you that was for wonderful. Allowing. I mean, yeah. I, I loved it. That oh, was very, um, very meaningful. It's a good way to end the podcast. So thanks again, Mike. Lovely. So guys, look at Mike can sing. That may be his second calling. Who knows, right? We'll have to see. So I want to say thank you, Mike. And thank you, Gloria. And thank you to our <laughs> audience out there for our support. And uh, thanks for listening to another thank episode. You of Life's of Shuffle with Mike Allen. And we got a series to come, so stay tuned. More information is coming towards you. Yes. Again, thanks, um, thanks, Mike, for um, <laughs> trusting in us and, um, and and sharing your, your your story and sharing what you shared today to our listeners. Um, again, thank you. And this is Gloria. Um, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's of Shuffle. <laughs>